picture a guy like me. What kind of guitar do you picture me playing? It's probably not this. <laughs> What's going on friends, Sean Pierce Johnson here. And yes, today we are finally going to be taking an in-depth look at the Kramer Pacer Vintage that uh, was lovingly sent to me by the chaps at Kramer. Big thanks to my buddy Al John Go for arranging this. Now, if you were watching the live unboxing that I did when this came in, I told you guys I was expecting one in black and this is certainly, I don't know if there's black on it, but it is certainly not a black guitar. But in the amount of time that I've got to spend with it and the amount of time that it's been here at the house and in the studio, I really have come to love it for what it is. A classic shredder guitar that really makes the case for me having something like this in my collection, whether or not I'm going to play it on the regular or if I find it to be something that I always want to have around. So we're going to take a listen to some of the sounds, we're going to talk a little bit about the specs and see what exactly goes into a guitar like this. It might surprise you to learn that this guitar is a completely maple guitar. The body, the neck, the fingerboard, all of it maple. And it's a pretty substantial piece of maple. It's not lightweight, but it's also not super heavy. So that's kind of a nice plus. Classic black dot inlays on the maple fingerboard with a 25 and a half inch scale neck and 22 frets for you to do all your crazy shreddy things that you might like to do. This also has a 14 inch fingerboard radius, so it is very nice, very flat. All your bends don't fret out and open chords ring nice and true just as well. One of my absolute favorite things about this guitar is the fact that it's loaded with some very familiar electronics to me. The pickups are Seymour Duncan and it pairs a JB in the bridge position and a Jazz in the neck position. So the same kind of pickups that I have in my main Les Paul are here in this particular guitar. Pretty cool. You have two volume knobs and a master tone and a small mini three-way toggle switch. But what I find really cool about the volume controls is that they are push-pull. Now they're not doing coil split, they're not doing coil tap. They're actually push-pull series and parallel switches so that both the humbuckers can be run either with the two coils in series or running them in parallel. It allows you to get sort of single coil-esque tones without really a lot of the shortcomings of a coil tap and just it kind of increases the tonal range of this very sort of niche looking guitar. Oh, and one other thing that the electronics have, both of the volume controls have a treble bleed mod on it. So you'll be able to go for some high gain kind of distortion sounds and be able to roll the volume back and still retain your attack, your clarity. It's not going to get muddy when you turn down the volume control. Pretty nice. To me, the absolute crowning jewel of this guitar, though, is the fact that we have a Floyd Rose 1000 series whammy bar. Now, there are lots of versions of the Floyd Rose, and it's been some time since I've had a guitar with a Floyd Rose bridge on it, but I find that this one stays in tune very, very well. And not only that, this is a Floyd Rose 1000 series, which is sort of like their high tier import model, not quite the German engineered one. I believe these are made in South Korea. There are more expensive guitars that have cheaper constructed Floyd Rose trem systems, excuse me, whammy bar systems, vibrato arm systems, because tremolo is a volume effect. There are more expensive guitars with cheaper bridges than this. So that's pretty awesome. 
And of course, I'd be remiss if I didn't absolutely highlight the tiger stripe finish, which of course, many of you 80s Shred fans will recognize from a quite prominent guitar player in the 1980s. Uh, I think uh, you don't need me to say his name, and I'm pretty sure if I said his name, another guitar company that he's associated with might get a little mad. A few other small touches to this guitar make it a truly complete package. Of course, you have your locking nut with a string retainer at the top of the headstock, six inline tuners, which I believe are Goto style tuners. They're not branded, but they're certainly very close to it. And on the back of the headstock, you actually have a nifty little holster for your Allen wrenches for both the locking nut and your string saddles at the bridge. With all of that said, it's time to listen to this Pacer Vintage. Now, I can't shred, really, but it doesn't matter as long as you're having fun, and this is a definitely fun guitar. Let's start out by hearing some clean tones with both the series and the parallel in all the pickup positions. <laughs> And now let's switch over to the dirty channel on the rock reverb and hear some distorted tones. Now we're gonna start out by checking out full volume humbuckers with the series and parallel switches. And then we'll do a little section where I start running the volume knob and start turning it down so that we can hear that treble bleed mod and what it's doing to our overall sound. <laughs>
just for the hell of it, we have to incorporate some pedals. So here are a few sounds that I've been able to conjure up that I think you guys might like and that I feel really showcase what this guitar can actually do despite its rather, well, excessive look. <laughs> Pacer Vintage in striking Tiger Stripe from Kramer Guitars. It's really kind of cool to see the resurgence of Kramer as a brand. You know, for a while it kind of fell by the wayside, not much was being done with it, and I know for a fact with a guy like Al John who is as passionate about the brand as he is, kind of spearheading the movement of Kramer into the 21st century, uh, we're definitely in for some really cool stuff and I look forward to seeing more of it in the uh, many years to come. I had a lot of fun checking this out. The electronics are like home for me. I, it was no problem getting used to the different shaped neck, the flatter fingerboard radius, and even a guitar with a Floyd Rose. I haven't had a guitar with a Floyd Rose on it in over a decade. So I was a little worried at first that it was, I, all those headaches were gonna start coming back to me and I was just gonna have the worst possible time with this thing. But I actually find that very few times do I feel the need to actually unlock the nut, retune at the tuners, and then do everything all up there. It could use a string change and I haven't gotten to the point where I have the strings on it because I, I mostly play heavy gauge strings and there are nines on this right now. So I don't want to go, you know, chain strings on the guitar and the bridge is all of a sudden like really crazy and wacky at a weird angle and I'm gonna have to do way more work than I want to do on this guitar. But it's a hell of a lot of fun. Uh, I am going to be using it for a little bit longer. It does have to go back, but I am so appreciative to Al John and the crew at Kramer for letting this happen and uh, getting this into my hands. It's a lot of fun, and I hope you had as much fun watching me kind of show this guitar off as I had making this video. If you want to see more Kramer action and let me know your thoughts, leave some comments below, whether they're positive or negative, whatever. Google looks at it the same way. And if you want to make sure you don't miss any of the videos like this, like Stompbox Saturday or other gear demos, make sure you click the subscribe button and ring the notification bell so you don't miss them. But if you want to make sure you see all of those videos before anyone else, and I've also started uploading some videos that I really don't want to show in public, you can find that on Patreon. A link is in the description below. Until next time, my friends, I'm Sean Pierce Johnson wishing you all out there great tone, good health, and a happy stomping. We'll see you next time, friends. Boom!